All right, here we go. Wow, we are at the Shadow in the East expansion. Can you believe this? The final cycle of the game? That's crazy. And look at all the stuff we have on the table. My goodness, this is this is going to take a while just to say what the heck we're going to do. Okay, so we got chased by the Easterlings, side 1A of the river running. So we got to do a lot of stuff. We set that side quest aside. We're going to add this objective I'm pointing to. We're going to add the river running location. We're going to add an enemy of our choice. So let's look at these cards. We got the river running. It's a 2-5. While it's in the staging area, enemies cannot be optionally engaged. I like to think they're on the other side of the river. And then travel. The first player engages the highest engagement cost enemy in the staging area. All right, that's interesting. The enemy I chose has Surge on it, so that doesn't trigger. It's an Easterling Outrider with 24 engagement. 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. Forced after the Easterling Outrider engages a player, it either makes an immediate attack or we gotta place one resource on the Easterling Pursuit. So let's take a look at that. All right, the Easterling Pursuit, it's an objective up in the staging area and it says forced. At the end of the round, place one resource here. Then, if there are at least three resources here, remove three of them and shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top until X enemies are discarded, where X is the number of players. Add each enemy discarded this way to the staging area. Okay, so that's pretty nasty. At the very least, every three rounds, we're going to get an additional enemy added to the staging area. So let's take a look at side 1B. It's five quest points needed. It gets five more quest points per player. And then we add plus one threat to the total threat in the staging area for each resource token on the Easterling Pursuit. That's easy to forget. So the Easterling Pursuit, in addition to finding you enemies, it's also going to be adding threat. But what is all this other stuff in addition to my heroes? Well, the really, really awesome thing about this final cycle in the game is that we were given contracts, and contracts give you stipulations to your deck building, but they also give you amazing bonuses. I'm gonna try to use as many of these contracts as I can. The one that came in this deluxe is the Fellowship. So we put it side A face up, it says you cannot play non-unique allies or put non-unique allies into play. There's your deck building restriction. And then forced, when you control exactly nine unique characters, flip this card over. So we will read side B when that happens, hopefully. We also are playing with one of the heroes that came in this deluxe. It's Smeagol. He's only three threat, lore two, 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 three. That's insane. He has the golem trait. He cannot have attachments set up. Shuffle two copies of Stinker into the encounter deck. And then response, after you travel to a location, raise your threat by one to draw a card. So let's look at Stinker. It's an encounter card, so you shuffle it into the encounter deck. It's a treachery, has the Golem trait. It surges, and it says, when revealed, Golem makes an immediate attack. If no attack was made this way, discard all tokens from Smeagol and flip him to Gollum. So we can't really trust Smeagol. We might temporarily lose a hero. And then the shadow effect is raise your threat by two, by four instead. If Gollum is engaged with you, then shuffle Stinker back into the encounter deck. Okay, so it's a little dangerous playing with Smeagol. I'm not gonna flip him over to the Gollum side. That We'll just let that be a surprise if that happens. Our other hero that came in this deluxe is Frodo Baggins, a leadership version, seven threat. His stats are 2-1-2-2. He's a hobbit. He has an amazing response. After Frodo Baggins commits to the quest, spend one resource from his resource pool to ready another unique character committed to the quest. If you quest successfully this phase, reduce your threat by one. And we're also being joined all the way back from the core set, Dune here. Eight threat spirit, 1-2-1-4, one, one, Rohan, warrior. Dune here can target enemies in the staging area when he attacks alone. When doing so, he gets plus one attack. He's great for this quest. You keep your threat low, you avoid some of these nasty when engaged effects on these enemies, and hopefully he can do some major killing. I am also bringing the One Ring. It's unique, of course. It came in this deluxe. It's an artifact. Ring, master, restricted, immune to non-master card effects. Set up, attach to a hero you control, and search your deck for a master card. Add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Your threat elimination level is reduced by five. If the one ring leaves play, the players lose the game. I have chosen as my master card, 
The Master Ring, a zero-cost neutral event, Master Traded, Response, exhaust the one ring, and raise your threat by one to cancel the effects of an encounter card just revealed from the encounter deck and discard that card, then reveal an encounter card. So uh, it's a great way to avoid the stinker treachery. So that's why I chose this event. It's to hopefully keep Smeagol, and he never flips over to his golem side. The one ring is treacherous, right? It's dangerous to have it. I can be eliminated sooner. It's raising my threat if I want to use it. If Frodo ever leaves play, I lose immediately, even if my other heroes are still alive. So it's pretty cool that it came into this game this way, that we can mess around with the One Ring. And uh, I like playing it with Frodo and Smeagol and other characters that actually held on to the ring. We will also get other cards in the following APs that have attachments that interact with the One Ring. So it's very fun to do some what-ifs, like what if Gandalf had the One Ring type stuff. All right, opening hand. Um, so you might look at this runtime and be like, wow, this is pretty short. Well, it's the river running, and no kidding. I mean, it's like the river sprinting. We need to try to flip that contract as fast as possible, and to do that, I need timely aid. So that's what I'm looking for. If I don't have timely aid, there it is. Got it. Uh, I was going to take a mulligan. So I absolutely need to get some of these big allies into play as fast as possible. This is a great opening hand. I got a zero cost to Yorith. I have two Daron's runes. I have resourceful. I also have timely aid. All right, our threat is super low at 18. We got our resources and we draw the drinking song. Oh, that's great. A little dangerous with the uh, master card because you shuffle it away, but that is another way to find timely aid. So we're going to play that right now. It only costs one because we're in secrecy and we get to look at our top five cards for an ally and we are going to pick the one that it looks the best. Wow. Overhill, Underhill, Gandalf. Uh, Keeley's not a good choice. Another drinking song. Orcris and Henemarth. Oh, man. Okay, so obviously Gandalf's the best choice, but he raises your threat by two to stay in play. And that's not great for this quest. Raising my threat fast and early is not what I want to do. I'd like to stay as low as threat as possible when I get to stage two. That is how I can win against this quest of this deck. If my threat goes up too high, that is how I lose. I have about a 50% win ratio with this deck against this quest. But I gotta keep Gandalf, right? I mean, he was obviously the best choice. Okay, so I wanna play this resourceful, but I wanna see whose resource I wanna spend to put it into play. So we're gonna play a Daron's Runes, and we're gonna see what allies we draw, and that might help us decide which resource to keep. Uh, we get a Duendine Mark and Robin Smallbarrow. So that's a lore ally. I have a card to discard. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of Halbrand. I mean, he most likely will cost four, and that's pretty hard to build up to four resources. Okay, let's play another Daron's Runes, and we get Iristor and Meblung. Okay, uh, I'm going to get rid of Iristor. He's also a four-cost ally. So I ended up getting two two-cost lore allies. So I am going to put this resourceful on Frodo, because I want to use Frodo's response, and I have to spend a resource to do that. And I'm going to spend Dunhir's resource. So I'm keeping that one resource on Smeagol. We're going to put Eorth into play, so she's a zero-cost unique ally, so that works good. Okay, we're already at five. We just need to get two more allies. Sorry, not two. We need to get four more allies into play, and then we can flip the contract. So excellent first turn. Excellent. Gandalf does not exhaust a quest, so we are sending a total of eight. And we reveal the Rider of Rune. 40 engagement, 2-5, two, 2-5. Five, two, five. Yikes, archery, 2. Oh, this guy is terrible. He's an Easterling. He gets minus 10 engagement cost for each Easterling attachment it has. And then when revealed, we need to search the encounter deck and discard pile for an Easterling horse and attach it to the Rider of Rune. Shuffle the encounter deck. That's the big mechanic for this cycle is these Easterling enemies get these attachments and of course these attachments make them worse. So we need to find a horse, there we go. So the Easterling horse is gonna give him plus two threat. And then at the end of the round, if we were engaged with the enemy on the horse, he gallops back up to the staging area. So that'll be four threat we just added. Ugh. And he has a 30 engagement cost thanks to the one attachment he has. We um, did make one progress, though, so that's good. We make one out of the 10. Uh, I obviously can't really handle a five attack. I mean, Gandalf could take it, but I can't kill it. So 
I'm going to leave him up in staging, so that means I can't travel because I'd have to engage the highest engagement cost Easterling enemy to travel to the river. So, yeah, that's a lot of threat. And then this is why Dune here is great. He's attacking for three, and that little surgy outrider is only three to kill. So Dune here can kill the outrider. At the end of the round, I'm supposed to place a resource token, and then I place a one threat marker on the objective, so I didn't forget that. Because I want to keep Gandalf in play, I need to raise my threat by two to keep him in. So I didn't do that in the right order, but I wanted to make sure I didn't forget to do any of those. Let's collect our resources. Frodo gets an extra one, and we draw another Daron's Runes. Crazy. Okay, we got all of those. Daron's Runes finds me a second copy of the Master Ring and a sword for... Dune here. All right, Dune here got his sword, so that's good. What do I want to get rid of? I think I will get rid of one of these copies of the Master Ring. It's not the worst if Smeagol flips to Gollum, especially if I'm already on side B of the Fellowship, and I'll explain that later. Dune here is going to hold Guthwini, and so then you can exhaust Guthwini to give him plus two for an attack. So now Dune here is attacking for five into the staging area. Now, I do have ally Mablung in my hand, which I can afford, and that would let me yank down an enemy from the staging area, getting rid of four threat from staging, which is great. However, if I don't kill that Easterling enemy, he bounces right back up to the staging area at the end of the combat phase or round or whatever anyway. So uh, it's really not a point in engaging him. And that reminds me, archery. I needed to have put two archery somewhere, so let's put that on Dune here. Uh, I think instead I'm going to play Robin Smallbarrow. He has two willpower, zero attack, one defense, two hit points. He's a hobbit, he's a sheriff. And then response, after you travel to a location, I can spend a spirit resource to raise the engagement cost of each enemy in play by X until the end of the round, where X is that location's quest points. Any player can trigger this. That's great for this hero lineup because I'm trying to keep enemies in the staging area. So that will just help Dune here attack. And yeah, not playing Mablung I think is the right move because Dune here attacks for a little more into the staging area. So hopefully I can kill that big Easterling up there in two rounds. Okay, so now we have six unique characters. That's great. We are questing for eight if I don't send Smeagol. Uh, I think I will. So now we're questing for 10, and we're up against 7, and we get a Rocky Outcrop, a 3-3, and while it's in the staging area, uh, this sucks. Characters cannot be readied by player card effects, and to travel there, we need to exhaust a hero. Uh, dang, I'd really like to get that out of the staging area. We quested even, because Frodo's ability only works if I can ready a questing unique character. So until I get that thing out of the staging area, it shuts Frodo down. Uh, I could exhaust Dune here and travel there, but I really want to kill this Easterling before the objective goes off. So I think I need to put the damage on that Easterling and then kill it next round. And that means I don't have a ready hero to travel to the outcrop. Okay, so we do three out of the five damage to the Easterling. I need to raise my threat by two. I need to assign archery again. I do remember I will assign the archery at the wrong time. I needed to increase the threat and resources on that objective by one. So I'm gonna do that in a moment as well. Okay, so I raised my threat by two to keep Gandalf in play. I am going to draw a card. It's another copy of Guthwini. Let's give Dune here a mark. So he is now attacking for one more. And even though I have a copy of the Master Ring in hand, I'm going to play Drinking Song. So I count the number of cards in my hand, shuffle them into the deck, and I get to draw one more because I control a Hobbit hero. So I'm going to draw four cards. I'm trying to get to nine unique characters. So I needed allies in hand. The other card I would love to see is a very good tail because then hopefully I can get two allies in. And we'll be well on our way to flipping that contract. So let's give the deck a really good shuffle. And I hope to find something good. Keely Feely, also good. Either of those, that's a two for one. All right, four cards incoming. Here we go. Uh, another copy of Guthwini. Hey, very good tail. Perfect. Uh, Furial and Arwen. Oh, nice. Wow, perfect. This is perfect. All right, Arwen's going to come in. She costs two. And when she exhausts, she's going to give someone plus one defense. 
Now I start to do the quest phase and I send Arwen and I'm counting Gandalf's willpower and that's when I realize, hey, I forgot all this stuff up in staging. So we have an additional resource on the objective, which is an additional threat. We should have done two archery somewhere. Let's put that on Smeagol. And then here I make a mistake, but I catch it and I correct it in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Frodo, Smeagol, Gandalf, Arwen, and Robin on the quest. And I was thinking I will use Frodo's ability to ready Robin Smallborough, and then I'm going to use a very good tail. But I can't ready Robin because of that outcrop. So after I do a very good tail, I'm going to pull Robin Smallborough off the quest and just say I used him for a very good tail. So basically I'm going to back my willpower back down. So let's play a very good tail. You exhaust two allies, you count up their cost. You shuffle your deck, discard five cards. You can put in two allies that have a cost combined equal to or less than the combined cost of the two you exhausted. How many times have I explained that card? A lot. I don't care what allies I get. Just give me two. Because once I get two allies, we've hit nine and I can flip the contract. So all I want is two allies that I can put in play. And we have seven resources that we can spend, basically. All right, there's four. Come on, let's see what we get. Uh, <laughs> Faramir, all right, I'll take it. Another very good tail. Quick beam, perfect. And then uh, three cards. Okay, well, I only have two options. I didn't even get to make a choice, but I got my two. Quick beam will come in. I'm going to put a damage token on him, and Faramir, of course, can give me a major willpower boost. Okay, that's awesome. I can flip the contract, but before I do, this is when I remember that the outcropping was in the staging area. It's an easy fix, I'll just give that resource back and then I'll just say Robin Smallborough was not committed to the quest, but he is exhausted from the A Very Good Tale, so I just lose two willpower. There we go, I got that right. Okay, now let's flip the contract to side B. You cannot play allies or put allies into play. Each character you control gets plus one willpower, plus one attack, and plus one defense forced after a character you control leaves play, flip this card over. That's amazing. That's a huge boost. So that means all of my questing characters just got a plus one willpower. And here I want to talk about what makes Smeagol good for this fellowship. If he flips to Gollum, he will leave play because Smeagol's no longer in play. It's Gollum now. So I have to flip the contract. And then in the next planning phase, as long as I don't flip Gollum back into Smeagol, I can play an ally, getting me back up to nine, flip the contract, and then if I flip Gollum to Smeagol, I actually end up controlling 10 characters with this boost. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, so this is great. I am going to be questing for 14. We are currently up against five. That's not right. We're not up against five. Okay, we get the Rolling Plains. It's four threat when revealed. Each copy of Rolling Plains gets plus two threat until the end of the phase. To travel there, raise your threat by two. So you don't ever want to have lots of copies of Rolling Plains in the staging area. Or you either want all of them in the staging area. Okay, we are actually questing against a lot more than I had. So there's two there, two there, four there, three there, two, uh, four there. So we are under questing by one at the moment. But I have Faramir, so he's going to boost my questers so that is plus four so we have made three progress putting us at four out of ten at this point now to beat the quest all i got to do is just run i mean i need to get out of here as fast as possible i'm going to sprint and try to just beat this quest before i get overwhelmed that's how i would lose Alrighty, i'm going to raise my threat by two to travel there and then i'm going to raise it by an additional one to draw a card with smeagol kind of forget about that ability sometimes and then now I can attack with Dune here after I do archery. Nope, I forget. I forget about archery. I have lots of characters with multiple hit points, so I could have put it wherever. All right, I start to do the end of the round stuff, and I remember that Yorith could heal somebody, so I remember to do that. But uh, yeah, there should be two more damage somewhere. And then, let's see, raise my threat by two to keep Gandalf in. I mean, in theory, I could just let him leave and then play another ally and flip the contract right back over again. But he's too powerful. I'm going to leave him in play. And then I'm also supposed to have put the third resource on the objective, which means I'd shuffle in the deck and discard cards until I get an enemy. I do remember to do that. 
I have a, a lot going on, and I've noticed as I play these quests, Elfhelm, okay, nice. As I play these quests and these cards that came out later and later in the game's life, I make more mistakes or I forget about stuff and have to do it out of sequence, not at the right time. And it's and it's really just because I haven't played these quests as much as other quests, and I haven't played these cards as much as other cards. So it's a lot to keep track of, but I think I'm doing okay. I tend to catch most of my mistakes, and I wish I did it at the right time, but uh, at least I'm remembering them at some point. Okay, let's commit characters to the quest. I cannot ready anybody, so I still can't use Frodo's ability, even though I really want to. And yeah, like I said, we're just trying to get as much progress as possible. So I'm setting my willpower. I'm at 14, and there I am. Jeez, Chad, this. Don't forget about this. So you remove three of the tokens, you shuffle in the discard pile, and we're gonna discard cards so we get an enemy. I don't think there's a single enemy that would have impacted me in the planning phase. It's just a matter of, did I make sure to do this correctly? Okay, there we go, quick shuffle, and let's discard cards. Yeah, there goes Stinker, that's nice. There goes a Treachery, there goes a Treachery. Uh, another st Stinker, great, uh, there's a Bow. Uh, okay, oh, and we get, oh, perfect. It's this little Outrider. So Surge doesn't trigger because he was discarded, then added. So that's one threat added on to the threat in staging. We have no tokens on the objective. Checking to make sure I got all this right. Arwen's going to boost Gandalf's defense. Wow, a fourth threat location, four progress needed. It's the exposed riverbank. Well, this thing's in the staging area. Forced. After a when revealed effect is canceled, place one resource on Easterling Pursuit. And then to travel there, place one resource on Easterling Pursuit. That's annoying. But it's not an enemy, so I'm kind of happy about that. I am questing for enough to overcome all these locations. So at the moment, we made four progress. And then Faramir is going to boost it by four more. So we've made eight total. So we're going to clear the active, and we're going to go up to eight on the quest. Okay, perfect. We're two away. That's nice. We need to travel somewhere. I'd like to get this fourth threat out of staging, but I left Smeagol ready on purpose so I could exhaust him so we could travel to the outcrop, and that way I can use Frodo's ability next round. Okay, uh, combat phase, no archery, but you know what? I'm going to raise my threat by one and draw a card. I get, ah, Brosy Cotton, cousin of Rosie. You know, you don't play many cards once you flip the contract. That's kind of just how it works, but I am liking that I'm getting these cheap allies in hand. In case I lose an ally, I can quickly flip the contract back over. All right, the Outrider is going to engage me because my threat is higher than its engagement, so it's going to make an immediate attack. I'm going to defend with Quick Beam. No shadow. Quick Beam takes no damage because his defense is boosted, and now I'm going to defend with Gandalf. He's defending for six. No shadow. And then Dune here can easily take this guy out. And once again, I have the option of just getting rid of Gandalf. And I can play a different ally, but I'm okay with it. I mean, I think I can just rush the second stage and beat the quest. Uh, if I was worried about my threat getting too crazy, I would get rid of Gandalf. But honestly, my threat is already high enough that I'm going to end up engaging any enemy. So there's really no point. In flipping him. Ooh, but I did get a Master Ring. That's a good time to get this because assuming we progress, we're going to be shuffling in all those copies of Stinker again. Okay, nothing to play. So let's just get the final two progress on the quest and we will advance to stage two. I will send Arwen and Robin and Frodo and Gandalf, who does not exhaust a quest. Uh, that seems like enough right now. That's 14 and I'm currently up against... Seven. Now I'm going to use Frodo's ability, so I spend a resource from his resource pool, and I get to ready a questing character that is unique, so I'll ready Arwen. So she boosted Gandalf, and she's now ready. And we get another copy of Rolling Plains, so that's a fourth threat location. All right, so we have made three progress at the moment, and then Faramir is going to boost it by four more. So we do make enough. Fourth threat was a lot of threat, but we do make enough to progress because we quested successfully, I get to reduce my threat by one. And now let's advance to 2A, the crossing of Aira. We're going to add the Warriors of the East side quest to the staging area, shuffle the discard pile back into the encounter deck, and discard cards until we get an enemy. And then we will add that enemy 
to the staging area. Okay, side 2B. Each enemy in the staging area gets minus 10 engagement cost. While at least one player is engaged with an enemy, no more than five progress can be placed here each round. And then when this stage is defeated, we win the game and we got to make 15 progress. Okay, so that's why having my threat go up was bad because these enemies are definitely going to engage me. So advancing to this stage before I, you get your fellowship built is bad. For this deck okay the warriors of the east side quest is now in the staging area eight progress needed surge doesn't trigger because it was added forced after an easterling enemy enters play attach the top easterling treachery in the discard pile to that enemy forced after warriors of the east becomes the current quest the highest attack easterling in the staging area attacks the first player so this is going to trigger when i do this shuffle in the discard pile and discard cards until i get an enemy because this entered play before we do that effect so if i discard any of these treacheries that are attachments for the easterlings the topmost one will get attached to whatever easterling enemy we end up finding here all right there goes two copies of that treachery right there okay stinker is gone again that's nice uh side quest no problem uh there we go there's a bow so that's going to get attached nope now it's a mount the horse would get advanced there goes the other copy of stinker okay that's great we don't have to worry about that and here we go okay we got the warrior of rune 34 engagement but really 24 three threat three attack three defense four hit points forced when warrior of rune attacks Attach the top Easterling Treachery in the discard pile to it. Man, this guy can get powered up if you can't kill him. He can just grab all these attachments and become absolutely insane. Right now, he's on the mount, so he has two more threat. So he is a five-threat enemy. I guess this was the best time to have that happen because we're already done with questing. So assuming I kill this guy, he's not going to bounce back up to staging. Now, travel. Where do I want to go? If I go to the river running, I have to engage the enemy with the highest engagement cost. But I'd like to get this fourth threat out of staging. So I'm going to travel to the exposed riverbank, and that places a second resource token on the Easterling Pursuit. Now, the good thing is, at this stage, you do not add that as threat. So we don't have threat from the Easterling Pursuit anymore. All right let's raise my threat by one because I traveled there and draw a card. Okay, nice. I get another Dunedain mark. And then this guy is going to engage me and he's going to attack for three. It's going to take seven to kill him. And when he attacks, he's going to grab a bow. But the nice thing is the bow just gives him archery too. But that happens after archery would have already happened. So as long as I kill this guy, I don't need to worry about archery. Thanks to Arwen's boost, Gandalf can defend for six but I want to kill this guy. Can I kill him without Gandalf? Uh, oh yeah, Dune here is attacking for a bunch, and I have Quick Beam. Yeah, okay, we're fine. Gandalf will defend. Uh, the shadow is discard an attachment I control. I can get, actually get rid of one of these Dunedain marks. I don't need it. So we survive that attack, no problem. Then Quick Beam's attacking for four. Everyone's boosted by one, remember? So once we add up all the attack uh, and I exhaust... With Winnie, I even had Smeagol. Yeah, this guy's dead. Okay, no problem. So we don't have any enemies in play, so that's nice. So now the ability to place multiple progress is fine. All right, let's place the third resource token on the Easterling Pursuit. And we need to shuffle in the encounter discard pile. And once again, discard cards until we get an enemy. All right, top card is an enemy. It's another one of those outriders. There's no treacheries in the discard pile to attach to it, so that's easy. So that's just one threat. Everyone's going to collect their resources, which I have plenty of because I'm not spending anything. There's Hennemarth, another cheap, unique ally to get me to my nine. I will play a Dunedain Mark. I have a copy of the Master Ring in hand, so I can cancel a nasty treachery. But basically, uh, I just got to make 15 progress. And then I'll win. So I'm just I'm sending everybody. Sending absolutely everybody. So Faramir is questing for three. And I can send Eorith for one. You got Gandalf questing for five. I mean, I, I can muster up a ton of willpower here. Because everybody's boosted by one. And then I'm going to use Frodo's ability to ready a unique questing character. And that's going to be Faramir. So Faramir will be ready. 
And then I'm going to use Faramir's ability to boost my willpower by nine. I don't know why I'm counting. I know I have nine characters. And so then I'm sending a total of 35. All right, 35. And what we reveal is a three threat enemy. There's no treachery to attach to it. And I don't even have my threat tracker in the right spot. I forgot to move it down. But at any rate, I definitely make the 15 progress I need because there's a lot less threat in staging than I'm showing. So that is going to be a victory. So 15 progress made. We're not engaged of any Easterlings. And that is a win. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first quest from the last cycle of the game. It's definitely a good one. Don't hang around in this one. You want to get through it really fast. Those Easterlings can really start to overwhelm you. And uh, it's definitely a rush quest. You just want to get through it. You're running for the river running. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.